In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we are very, very grateful unto you for gathering us again on another day, the 29th day of April 2017. And are given us privilege and counted us worthy to be alive and to be part particularly of this gathering where you have been saying to us from the first night say not I am only a child Father we have started the day already bringing our requests unto you and bringing praises unto you as we continue with this devotional charge we ask that you be here truly to charge us and set us on course for today's dealings that you have for us in the beginning, from the beginning to the end of the day in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to read a few scriptures. Mark chapter 9, verse 43 to 49, to 48 rather. And if your hand makes you sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched where they are warm does not die and the fire is not quenched and if your foot makes you sin cut it off it is better for you to enter life maimed than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye makes you sin, plug it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes be cast into hell where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Twenty two. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Back to Mark. Chapter 8, Mark chapter 8, thirty four. And when he had called the people to him with his disciples also, 
he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man also will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the Holy Angels. Last passage, John 13. 16 and 17. Most assuredly I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. 17. If you know these things, Happy are you if you do them. For this morning devotion, I want us to look briefly at what I call it is time for action. Can you say it with me? It is time for action. Again. Third time, together, it is time for action. In Ecclesi Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, the Bible says, There is a time and a season for everything under the earth. There is a time to keep hearing Instructions. There is also a time to begin to put into action what you have heard. And many times, even in the school system, we do not wait for you to finish your program before we have any give you opportunity to put into practice what you are learning. That is why in the educational field, they give you what we call teaching practice. Am I correct? Am I correct? After a number of years, one, two, three years, depending on the length of your course, you are sent out to go and do teaching practice. In the technical field, we have what is called industrial training or student industrial work experience scheme that exposes you to begin to put into practice what you are hearing what you have been taught so that we know whether you are learning very, very well. And in many fields, they are like that. Even in law, that they do not, as it were, go to the law court. I don't know whether they do it. During the training, I know that when they are in the law school, is it three months? I don't know whether any lawyer is here. About three months or four, they are sent out from the law school to go into the courts and have one practice or the other. 
And even while you are there in 100 level, especially with the new system of continuous assessment, we don't wait until it is exam time before we ask for your reaction to what we have given you in the lecture room. Am I correct? How does it look like if you go through three years and from 100 level, 200 level, 300 level, nobody gave you opportunity to react to what we have taught you. I will give you an examination at 300 level just before you enter your final year. Do you think it will work? I'm talking to students, so I expect response. Will it work? Even the most intelligent will not be able to cope. God is here telling us in this meeting, don't say I am only a youth. And when that comes into a mind of a young person, all he's trying to say, he wants to live till tomorrow. Some of you have very, very, very wonderful plans of what you want to do for God and even for your profession. But you think the time to begin to do them is not now. When I finish and I've collected a degree, you say it's not even yet time until I finish youth call. When I finish youth call, I say, well, let me settle down. Let me get a job first before I begin to do what God wants me to do. And sometimes when God gives you a job, that job becomes a reason why you cannot do what you think God wants you to do. God has given us so much instruction already since we started. And from today, we are going to be equipping you for action. Why you are yet on your campuses. A student who is active today will also be what? Active tomorrow. A student who is inactive today in all areas of life, tomorrow, even when you give him opportunity, he will still be postponing till another tomorrow. And do you know, even on the day of your death, there will still be a tomorrow. So whatever you are to do, the time to do it is now. After Jesus had given a teaching in John chapter 13, showing them the lesson of humility, how they should watch each other's feet, he ended in verse 17 by saying this very strongly. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. In Revelation 22, is that the last chapter or 21? Jesus again was speaking about this emphasis on doing. Can we go to the last book of Revelation? Last chapter. 22 verse 12.
And behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves, loves and practices a lie. Blessed are those who do his commands. The active word for action in the scripture is the word D-O, do. He said it while he was here teaching them. From heaven he's saying it again. Behold, I am coming. And my reward is with me to give everyone according to what he has done. If, for example, you know that your CGPA is able to give you a 2-2, two -two, or is going to give you a 2-2, two -two, or a 2-1, And on the day of convocation, they call your name. Maybe in the old system, there's a new system of a four now in the universities. The old is uh, five. And for you to have first class in the five uh, credit level, you have to have 4.5. And you knew that what you had is 4.0, which is a 2-1. And when they were calling people for award, they call you, maybe your name is James John. And we say among the first class in physics, and you are not expecting your name, they say, we have two people, or we have one person, and he's James John. Will you jump up? What will you do? You will look left, right, and you will sit on your seat. Why? Because you know you didn't get that. What you got was 4.0. There must be a mistake somewhere. It's only the foolish person that would think that God has worked a miracle and would jump to go and collect that award. When you get to heaven, Will they bring an award for you? This award is for those who evangelize and won five souls to God. And they give you. Are you likely to hold it? Or you think that they gave you to pass it to another person? And you know, when it comes to your lifespan here on earth, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 11, the two activities in your life that you will be ignorant of is the day of your birth and what? The day of your death. Why are you still waiting to begin to do what Jesus wants you to do?
what is it that he wants you to do? You know a lot of them already. In John, where we rest, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I'm sure even if I stop now, I say, okay, let's go into prayer. And I say, write down the things you know already. And you are yet to begin to do. But which you will begin to do or start doing while you are here. For example, even though the whole program is choked and you sleep very late. We still expect you to have your personal devotion. I don't know how many of you have it. As a life style. Before you came here. Or even while you are here. And I can go on and on and give so many examples. Or what you already know, not what you will know. To do. And you are yet to begin to do them. Because you think there is a tomorrow when you will begin to do it. We'll just pick a few things from scriptures. Some that we have read, some we we'll make reference to. About what you need to take action. I say it is time for action. And the first one, which I know we have been acting on since we came. I won't take much time on it. It's what we read in Mark chapter 9. Jesus spoke so well, so clearly, so much about heaven and hell. And following him is about leaving hell to go to heaven. So in this particular passage, he tells us what can make you not to go to heaven. Even after you are born again. I don't know how many times. You know when we are growing up. We are giving our lives to Christ again and again and again and again. Until you got uh, um, convinced. Assured that you now are born again. It doesn't matter how many times. Anything that makes you to sin at any level. Jesus describes hell here as a place where what? As a place that the fire shall never be quenched. Where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. You know, in those days, some will make fun. Yeah? I will sin so much so that when they, fling, when they want to fling me into hell, the anger of God will so much that he will fling me and I'll go over the hell to the other side. I know the, such group of people are not here. But he says, if your hand will make you to sin, what will you do? There is a sickness they call tumor or cancer. When it touches any part of the body, what is the solution if the individual is going to live? I'm sure there are medical uh, doctors and medical students among us. But even those of us who are not, we know that the best thing to do is to remove the part that is at. Uh, affected. If a lady is 25 
And for example, he has breast cancer. Will the doctor say, you have not even breastfed any baby? So if we remove that one, you only be carrying one. What if you have twins? You know, when you have twins, sometimes both of them are sucking breasts at the same time, isn't it? Will the doctor, because of that, do that? Eh? Will he do that? He won't leave it. And you know that even for tumor, the best time to remove it is when an individual is young. Sometimes a person is diagnosed as having cancer at 75. And the doctor says, we cannot operate him. His death may be nearer if we tamper with him now. But when you are young and there is that sign of tumor, whether it's malignant or benign, the doctors were advised that it should be removed. And Jesus is saying, your hand is what we use to walk, to do work, W-O-R-K. Your leg is what we use to walk from one place to the other, and your eye is what you see to give you direction. As important as they are, he says, if any of them will cause you to sin, do what? Cut it off. When you continue to come forward, not only here, but in many meetings, for the same problem, it means you have not acted like this. The best way to handle sin is to handle it brutally. Cause death to occur over it. God himself wanting to give us eternal life. Did it through a very painful way when Jesus came and had to give his life for us. What is the hand that is causing you to sin? What is the leg that is causing you to sin? What is the eye that is causing you to sin? Can you this morning take an action over it when it is time to pray? Some of you have made responses already in the words that have come to us, but you are still not definite. When you get to cancel us, you tell them, what, why did you come at I just want God to bless me. I am unable to pray now. I used to pray five hours before. I don't know what happened. Then I just find that I'm no longer praying. Or you come and say, I want God to use me. In fact, I want to be ten times bigger and better than Brother Billy. Or you have come so that he can lay his hand on you. So that you can be whatever or anybody who lays hands on you. And yet, there is a hand that is causing you to sin. There is an eye that is causing you to sin. And there is a leg that is taking you to the place where you sin. The stories of yesterday are very, 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 very common. Thank God for grace that found grace. But Janet... As much as she was a covenant child, what happened to her? Your names are even prophetic. Some of your names, especially for you, that your parents are Christians, your names were gotten by revelation. And they named you prophetically, covenant child. And you are even very, very active in the fellowship. But you know, the hand that you have not caught, the leg that you have not caught, and the eye that you have not caught. When a tumor is diagnosed, 
and it is not handled by a remover, what happens? It continues to increase. Until Janet was pregnant and the mother did not know. That alone can take our time, but that is it's not as positive as the other things I want to stress within the time that we have. But it's important to say that except you do that first, pragmatically and purposefully, you will not be able to do other things that God wants you to do. Can we go to our Jeremiah chapter 1? Verse 9, the Lord had put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. You cannot effectively build and plant until there is a rooting out. And this rooting out must first start in your life and in my life consciously. A pulling down before you can think of building and planting. Many want to build. Many want to plant. But they do not want the whole structure to be pulled down. For you, I'm praying and we're praying that in this meeting, those old structures will be pulled down in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what I'm passing across to you this morning is that that pulling down, you have a contribution. It is you that will cut off all the causatives that brings you again and again back into sin. What are the other actions that are required when we want to move with God? Second, is it Second Chronicles or First? I think Second. Hezekiah is in chapter what? Yes. Hezekiah is in Second Chronicles chapter 29. Hezekiah became king when he was 25 years old. And he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all his father David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, how long was he on the throne? How long? Eh? In the first year, in the first month. It's, can we not say it was immediate? Immediately he became king in an environment that his father had so polluted that people were no longer worshipping God. The first thing he did was to repair the temple. And begin to commune and have fellowship with God. Jesus said. If an evil spirit is driven out of a man. He will go around many places and look for where he can find dwelling. If he doesn't find any place. He will come back. To where he was driven from. And if the place is still plain and nothing has been done. He said he would go and bring seven more 
demons. And they will come and occupy that person. And the end of him is worse than the beginning. Your relationship with God, the Bible refers to you as the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, God should find it easy to come in and go out. And you should also be in a position to be able to commune and fellowship with him. What is your fellowship with God like? What positive action are you taking on a daily basis to ensure that you have a dynamic relationship with God? That at this level, you no, know, we brought you into different tertiary institutions because we know we can train you into one career or the other. God also wants to train you into one assignment or the other. But when it is time to give examination, we give you as individuals. And because there is an examination of my practice, you are not interested in working at it as an individual. First year, first month. Even if you are getting born again in this meeting, what we are saying to you is that it is time for what? Time for action. And the first action, apart from dealing with your sin and whatever causes you to sin, is the action when you begin to maintain a dynamic relationship with God your Father. It is because that is failing that many, many, many other things are failing. We say God is our Father. Can you say, God is my father? Is it true? Even your heart of heart, as you say, God, my father, does your heart agree with it? If he is your father, the same prayer says, let your will be done on earth. In my environment, as what? As it is in heaven. Are you doing your father's will? How will you do somebody's will when you have no dynamic relationship with him? You don't know what he says about anything. It's the only thing the fellowship leaders tell you to do that you do. It's the person the pastors tell you to marry that you marry. It's the journeys they tell you to make that you make. Is the course they tell you to read that you read. You are not doing anything on your own because your father has spoken to you because you cannot hear his voice. Even what James says, we should not be hearers only, but doers of his word becomes difficult for you because you don't even know what he is saying on any matter or on very, very many matters. And what he wants you to know, they are composite. And they are in this, the word of God. Which is food for your soul. And you don't even want to read it. Not to talk of learning it and telling other people. Time for action. Is when? Now. And I will say, of all the other things I'll mention briefly before we start praying, the most important is your connection with God. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. The branch in me that bears fruit, God prunes, but the branch that does not bear fruit is removed and cast off and is born. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you can bear fruit. 
From here, I will stress what God expects you to do in his word. I've talked about what you expect to do with yourself, what you expect to do with him. i also tell you what you expect to do in the world that he has put you. But if that is going to be effective, you must be permanently connected. And after I say, if you abide in me and abide in you, it now says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Where is God in your heart? Where is the word of God in your heart? John 15, verse 16, Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I did what? I chose you and ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit, fruit that will abide. Joshua asked his congregation, he said, Choose you this day what? Whom you will, is it whom you will believe? Is that what he said? Are you answering, hearing me? Give me answers now. Did he say, choose you this day whom you will believe? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Christianity is about service. The king that recruited Daniel and his, uh, his, uh, his classmate to the class for training, he said that after they finish, they might be able to stand in the palace that the king may not suffer loss. Which service of the Lord have you entered? You just walk into the fellowship and walk out. You walk in when it is time for the message. Sometimes you walk in when it's time for sharing grace. So I want to be there also so that nobody will ask questions. Were you in fellowship today? And if you are in any group at all, maybe the choir where... People are large. Everybody wants to sing. There may be just 10 people in the evangelism group. And I want to announce to us, according to Jesus, that the reason he has called us to himself is what he came to do. In John, I think, 20, 21, he says, As a father has sent me, even so what? Send I you. And in Matthew 28, the, the uh, 18 to 20, he tells us, go and make disciples of what? Of all nations. If you have ever given out a tract to anybody since you became a Christian, a tract, can I see your hand? One track. If you have ever spoken to somebody before, since you gave your life to Christ, that he should also give his or her life to Christ, can I see your hand? If in your service you have ever won a soul to Christ before, can I see your hand? The hand is reducing. Thank God there are, good, there are a number of people. He said, you did not choose me. I chose you for a purpose. When he was choosing those disciples, he said, come, follow me, and I will make you what? Fishers of men. And when he brought them to himself, he brought them that they might be with him, which is the one I've uh, stressed already. They need to maintain a dynamic relationship with God and with Christ. And then he might send them 
forth. As I conclude, let's go to the Mark passage we read. Mark chapter 8. Thirty-four, And when he had called the people to himself and his disciples, he said to them, Whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. That is a verse upon which our discipleship training is based. And we look at that verse, the three conditions of discipleship. The need to deny yourself. The need to take up your cross daily. And the need to follow him. And thank God we are, since yesterday, been given instruction on discipleship. And we'll continue with it today, so I won't stress that. 35 says... For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. If you are going to serve Christ effectively, serve God effectively, there must be a correct mentality. Your concept about yourself and about life that you have must be right. And Jesus is saying, many times we fail God because we want to save our lives. The person that excited me most in yesterday's drama was Mary Johnson. Because she was the youngest. At home, Nobody supported her. At school, nobody supported her. Some of you were begged by your parents to come into this meeting. I said, as I'm going, I cannot eat their food. I cannot eat their food. So if I must go at all, give me 2,000. And for you to come, they gave you that 2,000. If anybody wants to save his life, he will lose it. But the challenge I'm bringing, Jesus said, but anyone who loses his life for my sake, that is on every matter, you want to do what Jesus will tell you to do. And it can bring death to you. It almost brought death on Mary Johnson. Except for that hunter that was in that bush. What have you faced? What challenges have you? Because you are a Christian first. Just to pass an exam, you compromise. Exam that tomorrow, if you are dead, your certificate becomes useless to everybody. And useless to you first. Jesus is saying, if you want to follow me, you must follow with this mentality and plan to begin to take action now. I'm ready to lose my life for following Jesus. He said, for my, anyone who loses his life for my sake and what? And the gospel. You stand because you are a Christian and you maintain your stand and you preach the gospel. Why? The Bible says in Romans, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. For how many? To the Jews first and also to the Greeks. The decadence in our society, only a dynamic gospel can change it. And it's only the gospel that can bring people to a point of coming into Christ and becoming new creatures. Except that happens, the degree of enthalpy we learned in chemistry continues to increase. Enthalpy, the degree of disorder. 
It doesn't reduce until there is a divine intervention. Men will continue to be worse and worse. That is what Timothy tells us. In the last days, this and this will happen. Will you this morning, as we pray very shortly, decide to begin to take action? That for you, you are willing to lose your life. Can we stand to pray? When I say Nigerian Christian students, you will say it is time for action. We are going to say it three times. Nigerian Christian students. Nigerian Christian students. Nigeria Christian students. Can you go to God and begin to tell him the actions you want to take? Jesus said, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. The hand to cut, the leg to cut, the eye to remove. Can you write them down? Write them down in your notebook, the eye to remove. The leg to cut, the hand to cut. Your decision, your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer, in devotion, in walking with him. Establishing a dynamic relationship with him. And the outreach actions of your life. Done. Done. Make sure you are not just Going round and round and round and saying, well, God, you know the things I should leave. I will leave them. Identify them. Note them. The commitment God has been calling you here is going to call us into one thing or the other to do in life. Can you open your heart to him and let him know it is time for action? And you are ready to key into his action. You want to follow him all the way like Mary Johnson. Hypocrisy wanted to end like Janet. Inaction is not Christianity. Your faith must work. For faith without work is dead. Can you make up your mind that all the equipment and instruction that will be given to us today and tomorrow, you are going to live here putting them into practice because you don't have all the time. And in the end, you will be rewarded for what you have done.